Hiya. Right, I've just videoed myself making this. But... It... I don't know. It got a bit complicated. And it's the basic thing that I want to show you. It's for... It's obviously a pair of tongs. And... For heat, heat gun, yeah, heat gun, heat tool, holding things down and manipulating things. Um, they're not mega strong, they're not mega precise, although you can grab hairs with them and pull hairs, but you know, they're just a good pair of tongs made out of something that you'd ordinarily discard throw in the bin so I blinged it up a bit and put a hook on it as a fancy end so I can hook it on my string and then I always know where they are um, so I'm just going to show you basic how to do it and you know how you want to decorate them if you want to make them it's up to you. So you're going to need a craft knife, a um, nail file or a file or sandpaper of some kind, a clamp, tape, if you haven't got a clamp, tape will do, something that will cut these coffee stirrers. I find wire cuts good at doing it and some wood glue or contact adhesive it's quicker with contact adhesive and this stuff is waterproof and I painted that one that I just showed you with alcohol inks and I'd only just finished it and they are quick to make um, and it didn't give up but that is washable and it also stands up to alcohol I don't need that because I've got clamps um, a clothes peg will do. Pencil, ruler. I've marked this in um, four pieces equal length. If you don't want to bother rounding off these ends, then use two for this bit and use the ends and just use the middles for stirring or something. I don't know, I'll throw them away, whatever you want to do. Right, if you're cutting these with wood cuts, wood cuts, if you're cutting them with wire cutters, hold both ends. If you don't, take your eye out. Or um, give them a quick sand before you glue them because the wax coated being coffee stirrers and what I do as well just to give the glue a bit more of a fighting chance all I do is scratch them with a craft knife both sides um, and that gives something for the glue to key into I'm not cutting them in chunks, I'm just literally scratching them. Right. Select two good strong ones grain going straight no wonkiness um, no weak bits if you get it and you bend it and you see that it's bending really crazy in one place then it's obviously a weak bit you need it to bend but you know that feels a good one That one and that one, I 
I think. Just make sure that they're, you know, straight to each other. Mark um, which bits you want in first, facing inwards. stuff works best if you any contact adhesive works best if you use it as it's supposed to be used a thin coat on either side and let it start to dry before putting them together and applying pressure You don't need to drown them. And that's ample. I've stuck all them together. Darn it. I was so organised. I've got some that I've already started, but I've already done this next stage. And it. No, I shouldn't have done that. I was so organised. They look about right anyway. Um, right, the bit that's going to be in here, this bit could do with being straight, but you can sand it straight. If any spring apart because they're slightly warped, I'll get that back apart. Just give it a little more glue and definitely put pressure on it. Put it in a clamp or clip or under a book or something. I mean, these things are made cheaply, so they're never going to be bob on straight. I 
I'll cut until that one's dry. Right, I'll give it a go with dryer. Okay, when you put this last um, layer together, the outer bits on, and you clamp it, be careful that when you put the clamp on it doesn't skew it. Make sure that the tips are the same length. As I say, these things are made pretty cheaply. So don't expect them to be totally the same length and width and, and I suppose any one place will get them from lots of different suppliers so when you put your clamps on if you clamp it from the side like that make sure it doesn't skew it in any way if you can clamp it that way And then I'll take that off and turn it round and clamp from this side too, after a few minutes. Check that your ends, that's most important, that your ends meet. So I'm holding the tips together and then clamping there, like go. Because you'll have slightly different thicknesses of glue as well. And when you've done them, if they bought in like that, oh, they haven't been glued right along you can always stick something overnight if you dampen them and then overnight stick something in like that and let them dry with you know something stuck in them um, 
it'll open them out a bit. If there's not much point of contact when you shut them on the end, if you get a nail file that's got sandpaper on both sides, hold it at the tip and sand like that. You'll be sanding the same off the top and the bottom. So when you put it together, there'll be more in contact down here at the end. And you can shape them. God, my hands are manky. Um, you can shape them. I'm going to shape all this bit because I used just three. So let me just heat this with the heat gun just a sec. Sorry. I really should leave it for longer to dry, but I need to get on with stuff and clear this lot away. So you can either sand, 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 or um, I wish I knew where my craft knife were, my proper craft. Ah, here it is. Yeah. Or get rid of the worst with a craft knife. sand it's basically only like pencil but a bit thicker um, wood if you know what I mean just don't try and take off too big thick a piece at once do it in little bits shave it rather than try and cut a massive lump off and then Neaten it up with your nail file or your sandpaper, your sanding block, whatever you got, whatever you want. You can, which I quite like the look of, round these corners off a bit, up at the top. And also, if you use a waterproof glue, like what that is, because the wood, as long as you clean, um, because the wood is food safe, because it's meant for stirring your drinks, you could actually use it as chopsticks. Cheetah chopsticks. I'm 
and fly again. If it stays around any longer, I'm going to give it a name. Frederick, Frederick the Fruit, Frederick the Fruit Fly. No, I think Sid actually. It's after the glue. There's something about glue that it likes. sandpaper gets clogged if you've got um, a hog hairbrush that goes for whatever you're uh, filing if you're filing your nails Keeps them going a bit longer. I mean, they do wear away, but most of the time they're just clogged. keep going like that and round it off and just make it a bit prettier to look at and handle but sorry I need to get this done before I do it next bit because it's sort of covering a bit of this up and I won't be able to do it otherwise If you're confident with your glue and you're not bothered about it maybe falling apart sometime down the line, you can leave it as is. You could even put some tape around this top bit. If you've got some strong tape. Should have got one all filed up and ready. Thank <laughs> you. 
Right, if this bit bothers you, the raggedness of that bit, you'll have to either chop your nail file down the centre or a metal nail, a uh, metal file or just be a bit more careful when you cut them in the first place or sand them before you glue it down that might have been a better option eh? Right, you can either, then get cards out of time. You recording? Yeah, you recording. Right, oh, oh no, sorry. Um, you can either drill a hole, drill a hole all the way through. wire it, thread it, somehow, or I wire wrapped just round the outside and I did drill a hole through this way, straight down that way, rather than that way, um, because the ring would have been massive. So, or you can thread wrap it, which I think is what I'm going to do with this. But first, I want to paint it. Right, let me get this lock out. 